Good morning, Melissa. And there still is a lot of work on China going on behind the scenes. Next week after the Chinese New Year, the Treasury Secretary and Trade Representative Ambassador Lighthizer will go to Beijing. The two sides are now going back and forth to get a deal on paper. This would likely take the form of a memorandum of understanding. And once all those major points are agreed, President Trump and President Xi are expected to take a meeting. And then all tariffs will come off. At least that's what China is pushing for. In his pre-Super Bowl interview, President Trump said he wanted to make a deal and praised she said he wasn't giving in just yet. We've put very massive tariffs on China. China's paying a big price, and it's hurt China's economy very badly. I want them to make a fair deal. We have a good chance to make a deal. I don't know if we're going to make one, but we have a good chance. And if it is a deal, it's going to be a real deal. It's not going to be a stopgap. Meanwhile, the White House is embarking on a months-long campaign to build support in Congress and the business world for the new U.S.-Mexico-Canada trade deal. A briefing last week fielded questions about the effect on home builders, motorcycles, and e-commerce companies. And GOP Senator Pat Toomey said Democrats, though, are still resisting it. He said, quote, I don't see this as a high priority for Speaker Pelosi. Maybe I'm mistaken. I don't think the path forward is all clear. Some influential Republicans Congressman Kevin Brady and Senator Chuck Grassley don't see a path forward without ending steel and aluminum tariffs. No word on whether that will happen, but clearly, Becky, there are still several trade fronts on which the White House is trying to get across the finish line. Right, and probably importantly, these are some trade talks that uh, the markets have kind of already written off as a, a done deal. Not, not China necessarily, but I think the street is leaning towards that getting done, but certainly NAFTA or USMCA, whatever you want to call it, the new NAFTA is something that the street is already looking at and thinking, okay, it's a done deal, move on. Behind the scenes, Becky, though, there is a lot of consternation, a lot of hand-wringing about some of these uh, potentially protectionist provisions. Uh, the GOP says, well, you know, those were put in there to win over Democratic support, but the Democrats actually say it didn't go far enough. So there, there seems to be some issue with finding some sort of bipartisan compromise on this deal. It has a signature from the three countries, so that's why I think the market believes it's a done deal. Uh, but there could be some changes, some tweaks, as the White House tries to you drum know, up support in I, Congress look, I, for I this. think the reason the market thinks that is because during the entire negotiation for this, Democrats were some of the loudest voices saying that if the president yanked NAFTA, it would be horrible for business. So, right. I, I, you know, you think that those people, when push comes to shove, ultimately will get on board with this. We'll see. Yeah, it. and one of the strategies is to threaten to rip up the old NAFTA that's still in place until this new deal becomes effective and really hold uh, lawmakers' feet to the fire who say they won't support this. You either get nothing or you get this new deal. The hope is that they would support this new deal. Right.